Warning, the Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to episode 157 of the Stone Age Gamer Podcast for the week of July 7th, 2017. I am Chris Randazzo and joining me as always is a guy who blinks way too frequently, Dan Ryan. I really, like, I, it's just, I have a lot of eyelash dandruff <laughs> and, uh... And you're an NPC in Fazanadu. <laughs> It's like, the game's defining trait, people who blink too much. Anyway. It, it's staggering. It's the distracting. Stone, <laughs> it really is. It freaks me out. We'll get to that in a minute. Because the Stone Age Gamer Podcast Summer Series continues this week with Neutopia 2 and Fazanadu. And we've got words to say about both of them. But before we go any further, here's your weekly reminder that you can email us at mail at geekade.com. Just include the words Stone Age Gamer in the subject line and you can let us know what you think of our show, what topics you would like us to discuss in the future, or just say hello. Because we always want to hear from you, the listener. So, Dan... There's been a bit of news lately. There, there I thought, has, I thought we, could, we could chat about real quick before we there get has, to our uh, major focus. No, you're right. I mean, I, I finally was able to to beat and get through the three-player dungeon in Puzzle and & Dragons, and I, I got know. Cthulhu to drop. And I'm That's just so incredible. fucking excited about it. It's ridiculous <laughs> how excited I am to have a card that I am never going to use. Really, is ex- you know, excited that the gaming community as a whole is it's, about your experience there. I mean, boy, there's yeah, it was awesome. There's a lot to say about the three player stuff in Puzzle and Dragons. Maybe we'll do it at another time. I do just want to point out real quick. Um, I'm going to send a link through for us to put into the show notes about the. Uh, the bullying that's going on in the three player shit, like on message boards and Facebook and whatnot, for a community that is usually really supportive of players, it's super toxic and it's really strange. And um uh dude named Pad Ragnarok, who does YouTube videos and has a website, put up a really good article on it and uh and I'd like to link to it so people can check it out. It was good. Well, all right then. Yeah. Anyway, so Cthulhu. I, I would Yay. like for you to link to it. And I congratulations will. on your Cthulhu. I'm so excited. Cthulhulations. Cthulhulations <laughs> on your Cthulhuvement. That doesn't really work. <laughs> Not really a thing. Achievement. Thulu. <laughs> My achievement Thulu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, things have started off. <laughs> Things have taken a turn already. Oh goodness! My goodness! So, uh, so, uh, so, so this, yeah, the 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 Super yeah, the, NES Classic Edition, the Sega Genesis Classic Edition. I'm really excited about it. No, that's not. No, no I mean it's a thing, but it's not. <laughs> you know, it's just another one of those at games things. Though I, you know, there's HDMI output now, and that thing and, takes cartridges, which is crazy. And it's longer. Just, well, yeah. Yeah, they the were wireless cords, right? Wireless, yeah, yeah. for the the Genesis thing. But the the There's Super NES ser- Classic, yeah, the Super NES Classic. I, the thing about the at games ones is that they just they lack a certain degree of quality, and <laughs> yeah, by having none, they lack a certain degree of any. <laughs> well, not for nothing, they do try. <laughs> like things are getting better with each iteration, but do these really need to be an annual thing? I don't know. But, no, they so, don't. Yeah, the suits. They don't. <laughs> Super NES Classic Edition. Uh, it's, this this kind of came out of nowhere, came to left did it, field. Like, did it really? Though? Well, not the I fact mean, that it exists. Like okay. the timing of the announcement. You just woke up one day, like, ta da! <laughs> hey, uh, okay. here's the thing you're gonna buy. <laughs> There's just no fanfare. It's just like, and all of a sudden, and we're doing this, ta da! And we're doing this for three months. <laughs> you're gonna get ripped off. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be fantastic. I mean, honestly, no, it, there was a piece of this that did come directly the fuck out of nowhere and that is the fact that this game this thing contains the finished the finished version of Star Fox 2 that's which pretty is, awesome mel- that's why i need to have one like i remember you know remember NES classic i wasn't all like oh my god i need to have one it was yeah. kind of more like a i wouldn't mind having one of those things in my house they're pretty neat as a collector i'd like to have it yeah it's cool this time around i need to have this thing cuz i have to have 
the I mean, obviously, the final version of Star Fox to the minute this is released, somebody is going to rip the final version and oh yeah, get it out there, and then yeah. people will be putting it on cartridges, and that'll all be great and wonderful. But um, I mean, totally illegal, and I do not support it in any way, shape, or form. No, but uh, certainly not at uh, websites. We'll link to in the show notes that we don't support. <laughs> Of course not. <laughs> but uh, the um, to actually have final version of Star Fox 2 in my hands uh, to, to play, because I've never really messed around with that almost like 90% completed version that's floating around there. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The fi- what is it, the final beta version? I think that's that what leaked. it is. Yeah, I mean, I've never really messed around with it. Um, I've wanted one of those repro carts of it for a long time, and I just never really picked one up. But... Uh, now I don't have to. Well, actually, I probably still do, because I don't know how I'm going to wind up getting one of these. <laughs> but um, I'm I'm keeping my eyes open. I pre-order eyes it. peeled. I'm sure. I'm sure places if will they, be taken. If they do pre-orders, they didn't do pre-orders for the NES Classic Edition. I, I would be shocked if they didn't do them for this one. Would you, though? This is Nintendo. You're right, but I would be really surprised. <laughs> two years, I certainly two years in do. a row I'm, of the negative association with a product that people want but can't get but don't really understand why they can't get it because like you know i heard people standing in line being like i don't know why they keep selling out of this it's old shit like well that (laughs) no but but okay i suppose i can see your (laughs) argument of like why would they sell out of an old thing like it's just you know there there was some negativity thrown nintendo's way with the uh, with the oh, last most release, definitely. and and there's nothing but salt surrounding this release. Just like yeah, well, nobody's gonna be. It's all scalpers are gonna buy it. And nobody's ever gonna get one. Like that's the general consensus going on, and it's kind of hard to to argue with that. Like they say there's gonna be significantly more, but in Europe and Australia, pre-orders sold out in like 14 seconds. Well, so yeah. What I thought the the nicest thing I thought about this this whole story was the uh, the developers of Star Fox 2 tweeted out a photo <laughs> of them at a restaurant for their launch party. <laughs> their and I thought that launch party. I thought that, that was, was so touching and so sweet. Like generally, you know, genuinely. Yeah. Sweet. That's awesome for those guys. I agree. I thought I thought that was really really fantastic and uh you know, they worked hard on this game and they friggin' finished it, you know. <laughs> they made all game. A, a major game, a sequel to Star Fox, which was a big success on the Super Nintendo, and then it just got swept under the rug. And uh, it's For really whatever nice, reason. really nice. Yeah. That, and I cannot believe that it's happening. Like I, this is not something I ever would have dreamed Nintendo to do. Like ever, I figure that the fact that this happened before Mother Three got localized is completely insane to me. <laughs> That's them just being like. You know, people keep asking for this Mother 3 thing, but fuck you. Have Star Fox 2 instead. Not for nothing. Nobody's asking for Star Fox 2. I mean, no. because why would they even ask for it? Like, right. why would I... you even think that there's a chance that Nintendo would ever release this? And now I'm wondering, like, so what happens next year? Do they go on to an N64 classic? Or do they make a new version of the NES classic? Like, are they just going to, like, annualize these things with different games? And are they going to eventually <sighs> make a version of the Super NES classic that has, like, the Satellaview Zelda games on it or something? Like, this is this is a really good way to sell this kind of stuff. Well, I'm not going to say it's a good way. No, it's, it's a very not a effective good way. way yeah. to sell this kind of stuff to people like me. I would prefer they just put it on a virtual console on Switch. But well, there was if I uh, there was a story today that oh, fuck I don't even remember because I was in the middle of doing grad school work, like in browsing the internet for research stuff, and came across a story about this instead. Um, of oh, that it was Reggie or somebody said that this counts as virtual console and there there may be physical releases possible in the future of some of these games. It was a fuck, I, I it's gotta, such a it's so weird. I gotta it's I gotta weird. see if I can find it. <laughs> fill time, Chris. Fill time. Fill time. My dad's name is Phil. Uh, anyway. 
No, I think it's really cool. And I think the, the question of how far they go with this is a really interesting question because I think a um like I think an N sixty four classic sort of makes sense. I don't know that the uh the desire for it would be as strong as not if it doesn't well, have golden eye on it. I was gonna say if it if it has golden eye, if you have four player golden eye HDMI, then yeah, that thing will sell. But if it doesn't yeah, have I mean, that but at this point, look at this. We're down to we went from thirty games to twenty one games. So now, how many N sixty four games are you gonna fit in this thing? Like ten? Not that there aren't more than like, not there's not a whole lot more than ten N sixty four games that I think would really sell a unit. But right. it would have to be the rare shit. It would have to be Goldeneye, or at the very least, Perfect Dark. And you know, are they is, are they going to work with Microsoft on this thing and throw Banjo Kazooie and Perfect Dark on there? I don't think they are. I don't. I don't even think Perfect Dark would be enough. Honestly, no, it I, definitely maybe wouldn't be enough. But I could see something like that happening before I see something like Goldeneye happening. Well, you got you got Mario Kart sixty four, Mario sixty four, Ocarina of Time, maybe Majora's Mask if you're going to go crazy and throw two Zelda games on there. Well, I, you would have to if you want people to buy it. Yeah, yeah. That's I true. mean, if you're it, the the fu because like the the real the real classic N sixty four games are few and far between. Like there are a lot fewer must own games on that versus NES and SNES. I I think am I, I wrong there? Completely. Well, I mean, there's All Star Baseball '99. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Body Harvest. You got it. No, I'm just kidding. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, like when you think of like the definitive N64 games, you got like I'm looking down my list of games I own. Like, all right, um, Beetle Adventure Racing. No, that's a I great mean, that's game, great. but that's not a system seller. Uh, you got Banjo Kazooie, but that's rare. That's rare. And Banjo Tooie. Uh, let's see, like definitive games that would sell it. Like Cruising USA hasn't aged well. You could go Donkey Kong 64. Sure. Um, uh, F Zero X is an awesome game. Golden Eye, but it's never going to happen. Killer Instinct Gold, never going to happen. Kirby 64 is cool, but it ain't selling a system. Obviously, Ocarina of Time, Mario Kart 64, Mario Party. Um, let's see. Boy, uh, the original Paper Mario. Uh, yeah. Pilot, I mean, Pilot Wing 64, I guess. Uh, I guess. I don't know. Uh, this, this, uh, I, I look. I'm not a fan of this generation. I've said it a, yeah. you know, dozens of times, but like, geez, I, the never saw Spider Man. That's not going on there. No. Star Fox 64. That would be a good one. Rogue Squadron. That's never going to happen. They're not getting a Star Wars license for this thing. Mario 64. The original Smash Brothers. That's that's kind of a winner. Um, Tetrisphere. They're not going to get that Tetris license. Yoshi Story. Sure, whatever. Yo, what if they put the, oh man, if they could get those WWE games, uh, sorry, WWF games on there, that, that would, would be, be something awesome. That would be awesome, but that but would again, be again never going to happen. <laughs> probably not. I mean, yeah. and if you look like going forward with it, like, is there a way to do a game a GameCube classic where I don't think it's actually yet. <laughs> cost effective for the amount of product that you could get in that you know that hundred dollar price range? Uh huh. And like again, what games are you talking there? Now, I I would argue that there's a lot more for GameCube than there is oh, for sixty four. Yeah, I definitely think there's a bigger market for GameCube type but we're, stuff. I mean, geez. but we're talking much bigger games. Oh yeah, definitely you know? much bigger games. And how do you make that really cost effective to compile those games for an under a hundred dollar console? Really? I mean, because hard drives are pretty damn cheap, and. Yeah, but uh, you also got to look at this you know, from the Nintendo selling games perspective. I mean, like, how many games are you going to put on there? Like, the GameCube games are the kinds of things that they would sell for probably like 30, 15, 40 20 bucks, bucks a pop yeah. at least. Yeah. If they were putting them on a digital service, like, you're going to throw Wind Waker on there, Metroid Prime. And I mean, there's a great list of games for the GameCube, but I, I don't see something like that happening. But anyway, reeling it back to the Super Nintendo Classic. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I couldn't find the article. That was good <laughs> filling time, though. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. That was fun. 
I'm uh, I'm also really s- uh, surprised at the list of games. It's it's better than I thought it was going to be because I wrote a whole thing on Stone Age Gamer blog about games I thought were definitely going to be there and then games I thought definitely weren't going to be there. And a couple of games I said definitely weren't going to be there but should are there. And uh, I, I wrote a whole thing uh, earlier this week about... Um, you know how I did, and uh, somebody on the Stone Age Gamer Facebook page said that uh, I wrote, I sounded like a twelve-year-old version of him, and he doesn't like the way I write. And uh, to to him, I say thank you. I pr- <laughs> I appreciate that. It's a step up from how you used to write. Quite honestly, it is. Yeah, back in I the mean, old geek writers days. Back in the old, you know, it's some inside baseball right it there. Certainly so, is. So let let's see. Hold on, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get his name. Because this is the kind of guy I am. Okay, I'm gonna put you on blast. No, it's not not on blast. It wasn't my finest work. <laughs> I will not lie to you. <laughs> Man, but to games on the Super NES. These are what they should have. Mikhail Molero. I am. Uh, I'm sorry you didn't enjoy my article. Uh, please give my other ones a chance. I tried to write at least at a 13 year old level at all times. Um, it helps if you read them with Gilbert Godfrey's voice in your head, though. <laughs> I it helps find if you do everything with Gilbert Gottfried's <laughs> voice in your head. I find that that is uh, that is how I best enjoy your articles, sir. Uh, anyways, all right. So, Super NES Classic. I think that's going to be awesome, and I'm glad it's happening. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's really cool. I I'm still sad that the controllers are not wireless, but yeah, but you know you can get things to make them wireless, yeah. and it's they they. They're putting FX chip games on here. Star Fox and Yoshi's Island are going to be on here, and I'm really excited about that because they haven't they they haven't been able to properly emulate the FX chip on their systems, and it seems that somebody at Nintendo has finally cracked it. So go team! I'm glad to, glad to hear it. I can't wait to get the good version of Yoshi's Island uh, on my TV. Going to be snazzy. Freaking Earthbound's on there. I know, Earthbound, that's... Mario, Earthbound, Mario RPG, and Final Fantasy three are all on this thing. That's a and lot of hours a game, right? Super there. Punch Out, Super freaking Punch Out, which is great. Love, love that game. It's great. so very much. Super Ghouls and Ghosts is on there. Mega Man X is on there. Super Castlevania four. There's so like they there were a couple of stinkers on the NES Classic Edition, like. Do you really need the NES version of Galaga on there? Does anybody yes. need the NES version of Pac-Man? Not really. Everyone. But Chris. there's there's no stinkers on the Super NES list. No, right? there's really not. There's no weak links. And I'm I'm shocked like Pilot Wings isn't even on there. That didn't make the cut. That's crazy to me. Anyway. So let's start our show, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 20 minutes in. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, I mean, we were going to do a listener request this week, but I uh, I decided that it would be best if we stuck to the original plan and talked about our summer games, and we'll, we'll get back to our listener request next week. So uh, so let's go ahead and get started with Neotopia 2 for the TurboGrafx-16. This was one of Dan's picks. It was originally released in the United States in 1992 from Hudson Soft. Uh, Dan, did you pre where where were you previously on this game before we did the summer series? Uh, I was about halfway through, I believe. Okay. I started over um, to play through it uh, just because I I really do I really do like this game a whole lot. I mean, it it is the most unabashed Zelda clone I think that there has ever been. It is. I, it's it's pretty high up there. Golden Axe Warrior might give it a run for its money, but uh, no, this game. Is, Maybe we'll is, get to play that one if people vote, Chris. But like, we might. We might. Spoilers. Spoilers. Uh, I love yeah, this game, it, dude. I really do. I liked it. I didn't love it, and I, I wanted to love it. But there were a few things about it that were really getting in, getting in its way for me. Um, the awesome music was that getting in the way because the music. No, was not awesome at all. The music's great. Music is great in this game. Uh, I really, really dig the soundtrack. Um, there's something. Uh, there's something about the controls first and foremost that's very. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know that it's necessarily floaty, but the hit detection is very weird. Like the way you and the objects that you hit react to getting hit 
is very weird. Like I had a, this thing happens to me all the time with the fire rod in particular. Like when it's oh, when you have full rod. health, yeah, and it does the whole like pillars of flame thing, mm -hmm. where it'll hit something, but the enemy will be in the middle of the fire and it'll the the reaction to the first hit will pass and it'll start the next hit but that hit will be behind the character and so the character will take damage and instead of falling backwards it'll fly forwards toward you and you'll take damage and that's just well, a you're really just getting kind of, too damn close chris it's not you don't even have to be that close especially like a lot of the enemies <laughs> when they fly forward they fly forward like half the damn screen yeah there there and, is a little bit of a ninja gaiden effect when you get hit in this game yeah it's 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 not game breaking but it's like there's there's a very it's very very easy to take a lot of damage really fast in this game and it's not it doesn't feel it's not that it doesn't feel fair it feels unbalanced it feels like this is something that somebody should have gotten to in the playtesting and said this is the difference between this and Zelda like it's just that that slight piece of polish that's missing from it there's something about it that just doesn't feel quite right and uh that was kind I of can, bothersome I can see that I've never I've never really considered that part of it um but yeah I, I mean I can I can see that uh, there's it, for a game that looks and feels so much like A Link to the Past, it does not control like A Link to the Past. See, now, I didn't get Link to the Past from this game at all. I get NES Zelda from this game. Well, like, I, this, that too, yeah. This definitely takes... It's like this game was trying to improve on the NES Zelda, but it was... Obviously, Nintendo did that way better with A Link to the Past. Oh, yeah. Because if you're comparing this to Link to the Past, it's just not even... A, it's not even close. No. But as an evolution of the original Zelda, this is a really interesting take, but it's kind of missing that that actual gameplay fun factor polish that Nintendo tends to put in the, like to put in games like the original Zelda and Link to the Past. This one's just kind of missing that, that slight bit of polish. But... That aside, another one of the things that really bugs me is the... Now, I don't want to sound like I don't like this game, because I do. I really did dig this game, um, just not nearly as much as you did. Like, I think it's pretty cool. It was interesting. It was an interesting playthrough, but it's not like... I'm not really recommending that you go out and spend a ton of time with this one. Um, the pacing is really weird. Because almost every screen has some sort of cave or secret hidden in it. Yeah. And every single one of those secrets is a big empty room with one dude standing in the <laughs> middle of it. And you have to talk to them. Because as soon as you cross that threshold, your character automatically walks to that person. Yep. And has the conversation. And it's like, Jesus, do we have to do this every time? Like, when you're in a dungeon. Great dungeon music, by the way. But when you're yeah. in a dungeon... And God, I love that theme. I love that dungeon theme. It's so like I, it's it's way better than the original Zelda dungeon theme. It's uh, just so much more dynamic. It's, all of the music in this game is great. Is is really great. But like you're in a dungeon and you go past that room where the old guy's chained up, and God forbid you have to go back past that room again because That's right. it's just like you're talking. Uh, to him you just told me it's like he's like the the sword you're looking for is in the room to the left. You go to the room to the left, then you go back in the room. He's like the sword you're looking for is in the room for the left. I'm like really, no shit. I was just there. <laughs> one that I'm you holding. watched me blow a hole in the wall with a bomb. <laughs> this sword what that's in my hand right now is this the one this you're referring one, to, it's, sir? It's not in the it's not in the next room. It's in this room now. It's in my hand. I'm gonna stab you with it if you don't freaking stop talking. <laughs> So there, that, that's kind of a weird pacing thing that this game has is is that and the other thing that really really takes a chunk out of the pacing is the um, the puzzles and I, I use the word puzzles very loosely because it's it it, it kind of takes that block pushing mechanic from the original Zelda but it doesn't apply logic to it in no. the least no not at all it's just like here's just a room walk around with, and push on these. There's 20 some odd blocks. One of them is one or more are going to move and do something. And there's no indication. There's no puzzle to solve to get to it. It's kill all the things and then try to push every block in this friggin' room. Yep. And that's not fun. <laughs> that's no. not. That's not good. That's not good game design. No. And it's, it's like 
I, I, I dislike that part, and I dislike the fact that there are no indications, really, of where you can bomb to break yeah, walls open. Yeah, like, that's true, which no, is another thing that reminds no me a lot of original Zelda, is yeah. that's the same, similar, similar thing. And they fixed you that in the past. You just have to figure it out. Yeah, and at least with this one, unlike the original Zelda, they're a little bit more liberal with, with giving you bombs. Yeah, oh but, yeah, like when, when enemies drop them, it, you can refill your bombs quite quickly. Yeah, but it's it's still kind of obnoxious. And I, I, I was always I was always kind of of two minds of that when that happened in A Link to the Past. Where it was like, well, it kind of takes some of the mystery out of it. Where like, well, now I always know where I can bomb. And it's not like, it doesn't feel like you found a secret when you place a bomb. Right. But I also kind of see it. it I, I this becomes obnoxious where you're like, well, now I just have to bomb everything because yep. how else would I know to bomb something? I have to so bomb everything and memorize if I play through this again. Yeah. Although I do like the fact that when you continue stuff like that, do the bombs stay persistent? I know like the items you get yeah. are persistent when you continue. The bombed walls stay. That's right. They do. Cause I yeah. died a bunch of times in, in, um, so the third dungeon, I think, with the friggin' saw blades mulling around. The first, I think it's the first time you encounter the saw blades rolling around. Yeah, and then it's not. Just it's, there it's whatever the forever. dungeon was before the underwater area, which was really freaking cool. When you when mm -hmm. you went underwater, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting you to swim like in the length of the past, and instead it's got that cool like wavy water effect. In one of that, that was really cool. That is very cool. Like that. That's what I love about this game. Is I think you're right. I think as an extension. Of the original Zelda, this is this is just great. I mean, there there are some annoyances with it, but mm -hmm. I the variety of enemies in this game is staggering. Oh yeah, there's, the enemies. There's so there, many. What, <laughs> what they do is not all that staggering because no, they all pretty much do the same thing. Yeah, they all kind of the walk in a square. Oh, the, the monster <laughs> designs are great in this game. It's so cool. All of the bosses are cool. Um, yes, the bosses are a definite high note. Like they're really, really interesting. Like the weird frog lady. Oh, where she's, she's super like, cool. She's like some chick with the frog from Blast, the frog boss from Blaster Master as her bottom half, <laughs> and he even acts weird. almost the same way. It's so weird. That one's very cool. The underwater boss is very cool. Medusa at the end is cool, or towards the end, um, Dearth at the end is a really cool battle. Like Dude, the, what a the dick. fight against him is, <laughs> but it's really fun though. You know, like it's, it's really fun. But he's like, oh, so, uh, well, I, I'm just gonna take your rods away. Like, yeah, how did he get away with that? <laughs> you know that thing you've been using the whole game because it's fucking dope. Yeah, it's gone now. I'm taking all of them, and like you don't do, you clearly do nothing to stop him. You're just talking to him. And he's like, I'm taking these away now, and you're like, <laughs> wow, that sucked. Yeah, Poor that me. Sucked. Like, what? What? Good thing Hit I him with this, the rods. Use I got this them. golden armor and this fucking dope sword. <laughs> Shit's about to go down, dearth. <laughs> dearth. I I also really like the the continuity in this. Now I haven't I haven't played any of the first Newtopia. Right. But I'm assuming that you play the first one as oh as God, his I'm father. On his name yeah. his, his father. What's his name? Like Quaxil or Zaxalon or some weird name Jizita? like that. Jazeta. Jazeta. Whatever. What a weird name, but it's a um, fucking Dragon Ball name. Not even like <laughs> <laughs> all Dragon Ball names are food. That's true. But anyway, uh, yeah, I, I liked that continuity. Like clearly, you played through the first game as this character, and now you're playing the second game as his son, and it just it references the original game so much, even to a slightly comical degree in the beginning. Uh, the uh, and, uh, the old man. Yeah, the, like I'm that, still around from the first game. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty great. That's awesome. And like the game's the game's got a really good personality and like the fact that was it the fourth or fifth dungeon? No, it was it was was it the frog lady? No, it was the kraken, the kraken that you fight that turns out to be your dad. Yeah. Like that was kind of crazy. Like there's some neat stuff in here. I would love to see somebody tackle this game uh, like make a Newtopia three. I would love to see a modern sequel to this. And well, there. I mean, it says at the end of the game to be continued in nineteen XX, <laughs> which apparently still hasn't happened yet. We ran out of nineteen. I know. Fuck. Yeah. Maybe why? that's what the XX means. Like you just add exponentially. 
Maybe. To it. I don't know. I, I, I really love this game. I recommend that you go out and play Newtopia. I mean, it, it definitely scratches that, that old school Zelda itch that very few games do. You know what I mean? Like I, because mm -hmm. there are other games of this genre that are awful. Yes. You know, like that are just horrendous. And while this game is missing some polish, this is one of those games I think that like pops up on your radar and you're like, well, fuck man, this was, this was cool. I liked this. You know, I, like I said, like I've said before, I had, you know, the, uh, the turbo graphic. So I, I played mm -hmm. this, you know, this was a thing that I knew about when I was younger and was like, yo, this game's fucking dope. And everybody was like, shut the fuck up. We're going to play Glover. Like, stop fucking playing Glover. Some old bullshit or whatever. Gl you <laughs> Glover? That was an N64 <laughs> game. Was it? Oh, I don't fucking remember. Uniracers <laughs> or some other such horse shit. Hey, Uniracers is fucking great, dude. It, it I don't want to hear it. Empirically, Uniracers is not great. No, Uniracers is great. <laughs> it is a damn good game. I don't know. Motherfuckers were playing like Act Razor or some bullshit instead of this. And Act Razor. So, Newtopia 2 was your number six on our top 10 Turbo Graphics list. Yes. I don't even think you ranked it. I probably didn't because I didn't play it. Mm. I'm hoping I didn't because then I would have been a real big fat liar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And no, no, I did not rank it. Oh, that's good. Thankfully, Evan won't have to edit any of that out. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, uh, it is it is a really good game, and I think I would. I wonder where I'd put it on my list. I haven't played through. Uh, Ease books one and two, and I said that the Newtopia games didn't um, make my list. And I understood that they were great, but the straight up Zelda plagiarism hold, held them back. Yeah. But having played them and not really played a ton of uh, the Ease games, I, I mean, I, I guess I'd probably put them above maybe Soldier Blade. I don't know. I'd, I'd, I would be interested in revisiting this list someday. They, it, yeah, they definitely have it. to make the top 10. Like, Newtopia 2 has to be on the top 10. I guess I don't know, man. I'm looking at my top ten. I got some some great stuff on here, like New Adventure Island and uh, yeah, but Air the Song music and Soldier Blade. But the music, yeah, the music is great. But... I and you know me, man. Like I like video game music, but I don't fucking geek out for for video game music like you do. And and it's a damn solid soundtrack. But it's like, so good. That Zelda plagiarism is so real. Like ah, that whatever. Rainbow Bridge thing is literally the stepladder. It's the from Rainbow Legend Drop, Chris. It's not the, the Rainbow, Rainbow Bridge. Drop. That whatever. would be ripping off Norse mythology, and they had, <laughs> we can't have that. We can't have that. We've already ripped off too much. <laughs> uh, ne Neotopia Two was, uh, you know what? It was better than Trojan and Mega Man X Two. <laughs> so <laughs> that is certainly true. <laughs> certainly true. So it wins that. <laughs> So go buy it. It's on like Wii Virtual Console or some shit, right? That's how I played it actually on the okay. Wii Virtual Console. Yeah. It, it is there, uh, and I can I mean really for the price, I I, rec I would recommend it. It's just not. Don't go in expecting a link to the past level of of game there because while it's good, it's not. It doesn't not quite elevate there. Yeah, it's it's not quite there, and it could be because it's such an interesting world that they made and. It didn't. The things that it ripped off from Zelda are like its weakest weakest points, mm. like the burning down trees to find staircases. Yeah, that's some old bullshit. I like really hate the that. the block pushing. It, that's that's its weakest quality. There's there's if this this team had relied more on its own talent, I think it would have been a a slightly better game. Well, yeah, like just that moment. When you get to the end, fucking spoilers for this game, when you get to the end, after you've collected the four medallions, and you go and place them on this, like, fucking, like, tomb-looking site, like, out in the desert, and it rises from the ground like a pyramid, and, like, then you walk down into it to go on to the final fight with, uh, with Dirth is fucking cool. It's just, Agreed. it's a really cool moment. Yeah. Love this game. Good stuff. Damn cool game. All right, well, good pick, Dan, uh, and thank you, 
world for uh, voting for it. So Dan and I are going to take ourselves a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about Fazanadu for the Nintendo Entertainment System. You are listening to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast from Geekade.com. Stick around. And now, here's a look at some of the other original content available right now at Geekade.com. Hey, Dan. How you doing? I'm good, Chris. How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. Hey, uh, hey, do you know uh, about the Colon Cancer Alliance? I've heard a little bit, but I need to know more. What can you tell me about the Colon Cancer Alliance, Chris? I can tell you that they don't like colon cancer very much. And neither do I. Mm. Uh, so, Geekade and the Colon Cancer Alliance are teaming up once again for our annual Pain in the Assathon 2017. Do you know what the Pain in the Assathon is, Dan? Uh, I believe this would be the twice running annual gaming event for charity that Geekade puts on. Is that correct, Chris? That's right. <laughs> uh, every year, this being our second time, Uh, We gather together and we play pain in the ass video games for colon cancer charity because butt jokes are funny. They are. And so is watching us beat really, really hard and or bad games. And this year we're going to be playing games like Comic Zone for Sega Genesis, Mega Man Unlimited for the PC and Zelda Wand of Gamelon for Philips CDI. Several Geekade personalities, including Dan and myself, will be playing pain-in-the-ass games to raise money for colon cancer research and prevention. The event will begin at 10 a.m. on August 5th and end at 10 a.m. August 6th, where Dean will be once again (laughs) battling Bubsy in Claws Encounters of the Third Kind for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. I am scheduling it to be last yet again. He's taking it down this year. The only thing better than watching Dean frustratingly try to play Bubsy is watching him try to do it when he's been up for 24 hours. <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. That is 24 hours of nonstop pain in the ass video games. Stay tuned to geekade.com for more details. back uh now for the second half of this uh summer series dan and i played fazanadu for the nintendo entertainment system released november of 1989 also from hudson soft that was in the u.s by the way yeah i didn't so realize that last we did time that. last time we did two capcom games yeah again not on purpose and this time we did two hudson soft games yeah. again not on purpose totally didn't realize we had done that yeah, not a thing we were going weird. for so, now, I put this game on the list because uh, this was one of those things that I had always really wanted to play way back in the day because it was on the Nintendo poster that now you're playing with Power Poster. Yeah. And it just looked so cool. And I loved the name back when I called it Faxanadu, which is because that's what the word actually says. Well, and that's what they said uh, in the Captain N episode. Yeah. If you go watch that episode, because, they say Faxanadu over and over again. That's true. That's I forgot all about that. You're right. They they call it Fax Anadu, just like you know, in friggin' Mega Man Eight. Mega Man calls him Bass. He's not a fucking right? fish. It's bass and treble for he is, uh, he is not a fish. Anyway. Nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I later later learned in life. Uh, I actually learned this from uh, Doctor Jonathan Metz on Radio Free Nintendo a few years ago when he explained that it was a was it a Portman Two? Is that what it's called? Yes. Uh, of Famicom and Xanadu because it is a side story to the Xanadu series. So it is Fazanadu. Which is not uh-huh. not some shit that we would know because uh, we don't get the Xanadu franchise over here. Like, there's, I was doing some research on it and apparently, like, this entire series is a fuck ton of games and we've gotten, like, four. 
Yeah, like I know there was I I know there's one of them on the end gauge that would not the end was the end gauge. Yeah, it was the end gauge that we got over here. Yeah, because um, I have that one. That's the only other Xanadu game that I have is the one for end gauge. Well, and apparently that uh, that Legacy of the Wizard shit is part of this too. Yeah, that's right. And it's a that one's also a, a side story of it. Yeah, and um, it's a, what is it called? Dragon Slayer? Is that it's? Yes. Yeah, because gotcha. that's the sword yeah. you get in Xanadu. You get the Dragon yeah. Slayer. Yeah, you get the Dragon Slayer. That's yeah. right. Wacky. This this game's got a hell hell of a weird lineage, uh, and this it's a hell of a weird game. It's it it's definitely it's so obtuse. <sighs> it is. This is this is a game that you probably want a some sort of walkthrough or or map for. Dude, I I played because, it with uh, one like playing through this again because this was a game that I had played through as a kid and like I never realized just how fucking far away from completing this game I was. Like I was really <laughs> far away. <laughs> like I had never even as a child I had never even gotten out of the first area apparently. Like I had never gotten oh, to the okay. fucking like the realm of mist or whatever it's called. That's like that seems like it was the the bulk of the game. It was. was that, it was. That realm of mist, which is cool it's looking. It's very cool. That mist effect was pretty neat. Like it's obviously not like all that great by today's standards, but when you think about this game and its time, like It's very it was cool. It's pretty neat. Like you could see your character, your bland ass character walking behind the mist. I kind of like how bland it is though. Like kind of, I kind of like that this I game is like just, dirty. Like, he looks totally awesome in the armor at the yeah. end. Yeah, he starts off looking like, pink. He's just like some dude walking around in his underwear or whatever. Like he's the blandest character besides Master Chief. Like he's just generic dude. And he is generic. Everything dude else a. in this game, <laughs> everything else in this game is so intricately and awesomely designed like i love the art direction of this game it's very good it's just this crazy like giant tree lots of like this stuff the ruins look really ruined the monsters are hideous and the actual people in the game aren't all that well no designed. no they're they're all like the the wizard dudes you find that have like the comically large <laughs> eyeballs on them. they're all very they interesting just look shapes ridiculous and everybody that you talk to that like gets a portrait like the the priests or whatever they're constantly blinking like super fast every time they open their mouth they're blinking it really is distracting it's like it's disturbing it, man i remember when i was a kid and i read it it's, this game made me feel so uneasy when i talked to somebody and especially i think it's especially the priest there's something really really off putting about that guy's eyes there's something very kid touching about that priest <laughs> not not gonna lie. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it there, but there really is like he's a very creepy priest. Yes, yes, he is. A lot of creepiness in this game, but 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 cool creepy. I this um playing through it, I liked it so much more as an adult with a walkthrough <laughs> than I did yeah. as a child who had no idea what to do because like they do some shit in this game where like you can buy. A really good sword and really good armor like right in the beginning of the game but oh no you can't because you don't have anywhere near enough money so it's like well i could grind for that do i need to grind for that do i need like do i need this shit to get through it? and you don't but like it's just it's just not laid out well like there's just there's a or, lot or, of weird... or how about i have touched poison and there goes half your yeah. health it's fucked up <laughs> like it's like oh look a bottle the f what this bottle looks <laughs> like all the other bottles why why is this one poison yeah it's oh, and man. it's doing an open world game like on the nes with awful translation did not make for an easy time navigating through this like no, at all no. i mean they, this isn't quite simon's quest but it's not too far away no it 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 doesn't have the like the stupidity of like uh, just go kneel by this lake for a little bit. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah, the the stuff that you have to do is a little bit more uh, straightforward, I guess. But but it's also not as smart as something like say Blaster right. Master, or even and I granted I can't say this for absolute certainty because it's another game I haven't played through enough of. 
but it definitely reminded me a little bit of Battle of Olympus. Oh, God. I would say it reminds me more of Zelda 2, but this game has a lot more verticality than Zelda 2. Like, there's there's a lot of, like, climbing ladders and stuff. A lot of really decrepit-looking ladders. Yeah, and, like, ones that really blend into the background. Like, you almost don't think that there's something that you can climb because they blend into the background so well. Yeah, it's it's a very weirdly done game. But like I said, I and it also it also has that weird kind of not quite polished feel, just like Newtopia, and it's 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 kind of a Hudson Soft it's thing to kind an of extent. a Hudson Soft like, trademark. Like oh, we don't finish our a games a little bit. Like, well, it, it's not that it's necessarily unfinished. Like I don't think that's really the word for it. It's just a a certain degree of of tightness in the controls that I feel like several Hudson Soft games missed. And it's just kind of a, a general flavor that uh, that I, I don't love too much, but um, I think you're right though. Like across, it, like the Adventure Island games have it. You know, like it's yeah. There's like a certain. It's not like cheap, but it's not quite at the same level of like a Nintendo title, if you know what I mean. There, there's a certain uh, floatiness to them, like. But I don't even know yeah, if floaty it's is not the like right a word. Floaty. Yeah, it's it but it's that kind of feeling and it's usually kind of based on things like hit detection. Like you get up next to a bad guy in this game and just it you you bounce around so like quickly and weirdly instead of there being a real animation for getting hit, it's almost like your character just shifts. Yeah. Yeah, you do you do tend to like well, I'm just I'm going to be over here now. I'm just yeah. this this is yeah, where I like live. You're just there. I live I live over here and I didn't want to, but I do. Nice. We painted it. <laughs> what um like so when you played through this, did you use a walkthrough? Okay. Yes. I did relatively recently. I played th- maybe like a year ago. I played through what I then then realized was about half of the game. Right. And it was still relatively fresh in my mind, so I didn't go back to that first half, and I just kind of picked up from there, and and went through to uh, it just went through, and um, I just kind of picked up with a, a a guide because I remember I was looking for where I was, and I was like, man, this took me a long time to figure this out, just like getting here to where I am, and I'm like, I don't have time for the rest of this, so I'm just gonna go for it. And and follow a guide and a map. I barely have time to do this for real. Like, I I don't have. Yeah, I felt the same way. Like going through this, I was like, Tiff was sitting next to me on the couch, like reading out what I should be doing next, which is kind of cheap. But yeah, but that's kind of a fun way to play games like this. Like that's how I played. Not games like this per se, but that's how I played Link Faces of Evil during last year's <laughs> Petathon. And that was a lot of fun. Like, Jengus was over by the computer reading out the, the walkthrough to me, and then I was trying to do do it in that awful, awful game. And this isn't this isn't a bad game. It's it's a really interesting game. It's not it hasn't aged very well. Um because like we've been saying, it doesn't really have that kind of Nintendo polish on it. But uh, it's it is a very interesting, interesting early NES game. I liked it. I liked it much more than I thought I was going to playing through it this time. Like I can, it's definitely like like it's it's such the NES was in such a weird like spot when it came out because video games were still very much uh, seen as for kids. You know what I mean? I know that there were adults that had them and adults that played them and whatnot, but they were very much seen as as a kid's thing. And this being... As a yeah, toy, really. Well, and this being published by Nintendo and featured so prominently in their advertising and in Nintendo Power and whatnot, like, a lot of kids got this mm-hmm. game. And this is not a game for kids. Not that there's any questionable content, but, like, a seven- or eight-year-old isn't going to fucking figure this out. Like, it it just does not do a good enough job of telling you what you need to be doing or how you need to be going about doing it. That 
Yeah, that's a really interesting point you make, especially when comparing it to Newtopia, where Newtopia just explicitly tells you where yeah. to go next. Just every single time, you're just like, all right, now head over to, to go southeast and hit this town, and somebody will tell you what item you need to find from what cave. This game is just, like, completely nuts. Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> like, really nothing. And, and it doesn't have... The and, and like I, I even mentioned Blaster Master before, like it doesn't have that kind of intelligent design where Blaster Master is another complete open world Metroidvania kind of thing, but it's it, it's so intelligently designed for you to be able to figure out how to get to the next areas. Like there's there's a sense of exploration to it because there's so much I guess differentiation in the way things look and the way the thing is laid out so organically. This one's just kind of like. Well, there's the greenish area, and then there's the kind of orange, <laughs> orange brownish area, yeah. and and like they have a lot of the same shapes to them. It's almost like the original Metroid. That's really hard to do without some sort of map because you know it's just really obtusely designed. Yeah, it it does it does share a, a very similar quality, but you know, like I said, I mean, it sounds kind of like we're bashing it, but like I said, like going back and playing through it now, okay, it, I I did really. It's like an it. enjoyable game, yeah. It is neat. It's also got some. It's got some really good music. It's got some kind of obnoxious music, but and and some really weird music yeah. too. But like the shop music in this game is like really bizarre. The weird kind of I just just off sync notes like do 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 do. I don't know. I found that one weird weird I found music that one to be somewhat charming, but. It's kind of charming, but yeah, no, it's not not doing it for me. I love the first town music, the first town in the game, like the right. castle town. That's that that song is, I that's been in my iPod for years. That that is a phenomenal song. When I did rent this game once when I was younger, I, I never got that out was of the that thing town. that stuck with me. Fuck, I'm just still in this town. Yeah, God pretty much. It. I don't know where to go. This bitch told me to go right and then straight, and I can't make a right. Like I can only go straight. God damn it. Yeah, that's the only thing <laughs> I don't understand. Do. But again, that music was reused for the ending. And the, even the, the title screen music was reused for the ending, which I, is, is kind of cheap. And that scene, it's basically just like playing the. It's like Jurassic Park for Super Nintendo. It plays the intro backwards. <laughs> like, you bastards. <laughs> oh, now he's walking away from town. And why did he take. Where did he put all that armor? He looked so cool. And now he's leaving town in his. Pink Soga or whatever the hell he's wearing. This is, I think, very uh, very similar to uh, Newtopia, a game that I would like to see revisited. You know, like with, with yeah. modern sensibilities, this could be a fucking, like, Shovel Knight kind of thing. And not nearly as charming, but, you know, Shovel Knight's kind of the same, has some of the same qualities of, like, upgrading your weapons and, like, buying shit and going from town to town. And, you mm -hmm. know, there's... Some of it can be a little bit obtuse and whatnot at times, but you know, I think a team like Yacht Club Games could really make a really badass Falzanadu. They they Damn, probably I want could. That to happen now. Now, did you hear the news about Shovel Knight in fucking Blaster Master? He's they're adding him to Blaster Master as a playable character. As a playable character for Blaster Master Zero, Shantae and Shovel Knight. But he's just going to be Shovel Knight, right? Like he's not going to get a shovel tank? Oh, no, he gets his own tank. Everybody oh, gets their he? own tank. Oh, that's what's crazy about these these DLC things, and that's what changes it up so much. Like, when you play the game as Jason, like, you play it as, as Blaster Master. Like, you right. don't want to be outside of your tank unless you have to. Right. But when you're playing, like, I'm playing through it, still working on it uh, as Gun Vault. And you want to be out of your tank because in some ways you're even more powerful. You can you can wall jump so you can get to all these places that you would need hover for in your tank, but you can get to them as your little dude. So like I looked at the little trailer of it and Shuffle Knight's just bouncing around on stuff like out of his in his tank, which is amazing. That's it doesn't awesome. make any sense that he has his own version of Sophia the Third, but who cares? It's <laughs> awesome. I love the little tiny shovel knight sprite bouncing around, and I, you go in the top few things, and you can still do the fishing thing for shovel knight. You get to the edge of something, <laughs> sit down and pull out a fishing rod, and find power ups. I'm, 
I cannot believe that they're doing this shit. And it's free DLC. Like, as long as you download it the first, I think, two weeks that it's out, it's free DLC. It's That's so crazy. ridiculous. Yeah, I got to get this. <laughs> you really do have to get it. It's, I, I mean, the game itself is phenomenal. I mean, obviously, I vastly prefer it on Switch to 3DS because I like playing this kind of stuff on sure. TV. But... I mean, it's perfectly serviceable on 3DS. You cannot beat this free DLC, man. Isn't there supposed to be a PS4 version coming? I thought, wasn't that a thing? I am don't I, know. Am I totally wrong on that? I mean, I hadn't heard. Um, I thought I I hadn't heard anything about, about it, but uh, I, mean, I guess I wouldn't be surprised. But uh, it, I, I feel like this is a lot of the... It's It's got so much in common with Gunvolt. And Gunvolt didn't come to anything else, right? That's just been 3DS and now Switch. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, because I don't know how much muscle they really have behind this game and porting it to other places, which is why, I mean, the first two characters were other Inti Creates games, but this is friggin' Shovel Knight and Shantae. Like, they're not their games, so no. it's kind of cool that they're, they're putting them in there. I, I, re I really thought that there was a thing. Oh, man, fuck it. Whatever. I'll get it on the 3DS. Give me a reason to pull that back out. Yeah, that's... Well, we're all going to need to pull our... Uh, we're all going to need to pull them back out soon because friggin' Metroid's coming out for it. I know, I've got it charging right now. <laughs> I'm waiting. Yeah, waiting that's... For it. Mine's sitting on my, my end table where it used to be. I had packed it up and... Uh, nope. I, I, I had to unpack it because... Metroid's coming out for it, and I'm gonna need to play that game soon. The whole time I'm gonna be wishing I was playing it on my TV, but yeah, well, yeah. On that note, so, Fuzzanadu, yeah. Fuzzanadu, <laughs> another another nice recommendation. I I say give it a shot. Grab a walkthrough when you're yeah, doing definitely it. play it with a walkthrough. I think you'll uh, I think you'll enjoy it. There's there's some really cool design in the game. It it is not um it is a dirty fantasy game. You know what I mean? And not in a sexy kind of dirty, but like it is not bright colors and, you know, charming no, looking sprites. Yeah. It is it is down and dirty. And I like there that. There isn't about even it. like big, beautiful, like sprawling green fields. Nope. It's not like nope. this is not Hyrule. This is a it's not even Lord of the Rings. It's just mm -hmm. kind of a, a very brownish kind of game and not really in a bad way. Just. No, this, a lot of ruins, a lot of just... just. Kinda, this is a fucked up town. Yeah. This and is, it's a good thing you're there to help it out. It is. <laughs> so these were two uh, These were two pretty games. Uh, two, two pretty games. Two pretty good games. And it's kind of what uh, what I was hoping we would get to with this uh, this little summer series challenge that we're, that we're doing here. Of like, you know, these were games that for whatever reason, we didn't get through when they were originally out, and there's merit to them. There is, and I'm glad we liked both of these games, because uh, the Meg Mega Man X2, we did not care for, no, no. and Trojan, and you don't you love Trojan more than anywhere I near the level that I yeah, did, but... Not even close. But that's alright, I think I'm the only Trojan fan left. <laughs> which is fine. I didn't hate it. It was just weird, but yeah, these were two games I'm I'm glad to to have under my belt now. I mean, and thankfully, neither of well, none of these four have been Echo the Dolphin, and that makes no, me happy. No, we're gonna have to get to that one of these days. That's good. next year's pain in the assathon. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do uh, we'll do the Echo trilogy, Echo Echo Two, and Echo Junior. Mm, yeah, gotta get that on there. What about Echo Defender of the Future for Dreamcast? Oh. I don't know. My uh, my my Amazon Echo just said she wasn't sure about that. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, what we really need to do is 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 uh, the Bubsy anthology because oh, I now have all of those games. Jeez, why? After too many games, I have every version of Bubsy. Well, every console version of Bubsy. I still haven't found a copy of Super Bubsy for PC, but I'm not really sure. I give a crap about that. But I have. Bubsy and Claws Encounters of the Furred Kind for both Super Nintendo and Genesis. Bubsy and Fractured Furry Tales, complete in box for Atari Jaguar. <laughs> Bubsy t and Bubsy 2 for Super Nintendo, Genesis, and Game Boy. Ow. And Bubsy 3D for PlayStation, which I believe is all flavors of Bubsy. And what's, what's crazy about this, Chris, is that we have not yet 
hit a level of celebrity where people bring us shit. No, we this is not. you buying stuff. This is me buying stuff. The On people purpose. at the the nice people at the Stone Age Gamer booth helped me out by finding the uh, Super Nintendo version of Bubsy Two at Too Many Games. Uh, but other than that, <laughs> yeah. these are decisions that were made. You know what? There was a cop. There was a complete in box copy of Bubsy for Jaguar there. And when I picked that up, see, I already had the game, so now I have an extra copy of the game to sell off. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm this close. I have everything, all I need now to have every Bubsy game ever is Bubsy 2 for Super Nintendo and friggin' Game Boy. So I'm like, I'm at too many games. There has to be somebody here with a copy of these games. Oh, there multiple somebodies, I would imagine. Oh, no, there weren't. They were very hard to find. And neither of them have have the box. That's what that's what's really itching me right now is I need a box and manual for Bubsy Two for Super Nintendo, and a box and manual for Bubsy Two for Game Boy. I would settle for a reproduction box of Bubsy Two for Game Boy because nobody's got the box for Bubsy Two on Game Boy. Nobody's got it. I want it, and I I I, I don't seem to be able to have it because if I'm gonna have the bu the complete Bubsy Bubsy Epic Saga. I need it to be in the boxes. I, I believe you need to take those boxes and put them in a shadow box and hang them above your mantle. Stone Age Gamer listeners, above your mantle. Stone Age <laughs> Gamer listeners, help Chris out. One of you has to have the box for Bubby's, Bubsy 2. Our Super millions Nintendo of and listeners. And or Game Boy. This yes, podcast somebody. literally reaches millions of ears. Per literally. Week. Literally. We think. We know. We actually have no for idea. A fact. <laughs> Definitively, this podcast is the greatest video game podcast in the history of ever. Anyone who argues that is simply incorrect. So, somebody has to have the box to. Because look, you're not using it. Let's be honest. You, <laughs> nameless listener, Craig. I think I'll call you Craig. Craig, who has the box for Bubsy Two. <laughs> Who has multiple boxes? You're a Bubsy 2 box hoarder, Craig. Bastard. Send Chris a box. Or at least send it to send it to mail at geekgate.com. <laughs> email it to mail at <laughs> Email a picture. It, it, better yet, get a Microsoft Paint picture of the Bubsy 2 box. That is what I want to see next week. Listeners, please make this happen. Email Microsoft Paint pictures of the Bubsy 2 box <laughs> to mail at geekgate.com. You will make me such a happy camper. I can't even begin to tell you. And that's our show. <laughs> Join us next week for that listener request topic that we mentioned last week. Marty C. wants us to talk about games that we love that the rest of the world hates. Bubsy. Bubsy. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's going to be pretty fun. No, it's, it's, it's not Bubsy. Well, kind of the first one, because I really don't love the other ones. They're shit. Uh, but once again, you can be like Marty C. and get in touch with us at mail at geekade.com, as well as all flavors of social media that we inhabit. You can like us on Facebook, find us on Instagram at Geekade, subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels for our latest video content, and follow us on Twitter at the underscore Geekade. You can also find us individually on Twitter. I'm at Geekade Chris, that's Geekade K-R-I-S, and Dan is at... At Geekade Dan. If you're interested in more information about anything Bubsy related that we discussed here tonight, be oh, sure to check out our show notes. Bubsy Authority. And while you're at it, you can also subscribe to this and any of our other wonderful God, I'm imagining a Bubsy Cthulhu crossover right now. Just Bubsy with a bunch of face tentacles Cthubsy. made out of yarn. Cthubsy. Cthubsy. <laughs> <laughs> I need a picture of Cthubsy stat. <laughs> God damn it. We're... Get Matt Much on this. I know he's listening. Matt Much, I need a picture of Cthubsy. We need Cthubsy. To be real. Oh, my God. Oh. Well, it only took an hour and 18 minutes to get the show title this week, but... Cthubsy. <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, yeah, contact us. I t leave a review, iTunes, or Stitcher. Uh, welcome and appreciated. We would also like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making the show listenable, arguably listenable for all you folks. 
We'd also like to thank Mark TDK Knight for our show's theme. You can check if he listened to this show, he would take that song back in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> he would change his name to Mark TDK Thubsy, is what TDK he would do. Thubsy. <laughs> TDK Thubsy. Oh, you can check him out on SoundCloud and Bandcamp or his website, which we have a link to in the show notes. Again, always remember to keep your eyes on geekade.com where we post something new all the time. And now it is time to announce the games that will be in the poll for next month's summer series. Voting will begin on the Stone Age Gamer and Geekade Facebook pages uh, the same way before. Oh, just select the emoticon that course corresponds with the game you want us to play the most, and the top two games will be chosen. Dan and I will play through, or at least try to play through, whatever you choose. I'm the games through. are, and the voting begins on the Friday that this episode goes up. The games are Karnov for NES, Golden Axe Warrior for Sega Master System, Crystallis for NES, General Chaos for Sega Genesis, God Hand for PlayStation 2, and King of Demons for Super NES, which is a freaking Super Famicom game that was never released here in America. Thank you, Dan. I know. We're going to do it anyway. Let's <laughs> get my hands on that one. Voting goes live Friday afternoon, the day this episode gets posted, and will close on Wednesday morning. Uh, the, the, the following Wednesday morning, because that's, you know, Wednesday night we record. So that's uh, that's it, everybody. If, Thank you very much for listening. If I had to guess, bold prediction here. Not trying to influence anybody because whatever, I I actually legitimately want to play all of these. Um, I would say it's going to end up Karnov and Gold Warrior. I think it's going to end up uh, Karnov and Crystallis. I would be happy with either of those. I would be happy with either of them. Honestly, I want to play all of these as well. Yeah. Um, Somehow it's going to be Echo the Dolphin. <laughs> it will not. It will not There's be because I'm not going to play it. Somebody's going to code a dolphin emoticon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even going to watch a walkthrough or a playthrough to talk about it. <laughs> It'll be you talking about fucking Echo the Dolphin for 20 minutes. You're just going to listen to the surreal ass soundtrack and just be like, Wow. I'm just going to fucking have Wow. Like I'm going to have my phone next to the microphone. So that I can play dolphin chitter chatter while you're talking. <laughs> Fuck that dude. Six ways till Sunday. It sucks. That's it, everybody. Thank you for listening, and keep playing games. Kathum. Kathum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't care what anybody says. Kathumzy is hysterical.